morning. Uh, this is Father Scott Leanna at St. Thomas of Canterbury Episcopal Church in Greendale. Uh, coming together this morning, uh, we are going to join in worship on Sunday, January 17th. Uh, this morning, participating in our worship service, our parish deacon, the Reverend Marge Kiss. Our lector this morning is Ms. Lisa Shimoleski. Helping with uh, recording our prayer this morning is our parish senior warden, Ms. Margaret Dome. And putting the video together and adding music and posting it uh, is the work of Mr. Joe Newball, our music director. So as we prepare to enter into this time of prayer and praise to the living God, I would like to invite us to pause for a moment and let's bring to God those areas of our own lives today that may be calling out for healing, for reconciliation, for hope, and for new life. We'll take just a moment of quiet as we enter into our prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and, and blessed, blessed be his, his kingdom, kingdom now, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Joining our voices together, we give praise and glory to the living God. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, 
Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. On that day, I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew because his sons were, bless were blaspheming God and he did not restrain them. Therefore, I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, Here I am. Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you and more also if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was a trustworthy prophet of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The response is Psalm 139, verses 1 through 5 and 12 through 17. Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting up and my, my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting places and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God, how great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all my lifespan would need to be like yours. The second reading, a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach, and the stomach for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. 
And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body, but the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael asked, replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Sometimes in, uh, oh, in the church world, when we talk about religion, when we talk about our faith in Christ, one of the words sometimes that comes up is the notion of vocation or call. Uh, this word has its roots in the Latin word vocare, which simply means uh, to summons or to invite. So vocation or call is, is a central part, really, for us of, of what it means to follow Jesus. And, I, and I'd like to look this morning at maybe three different ways of looking at that notion of vocation or call. And, and sort of uh, I want to look at, at, at one of each in each of our readings this morning. So, so what does it mean to be called, to be invited by God? What does that look like in terms of our own lives? Well, one of the, the maybe more traditional ways we might think about it is, um, is in terms of, uh, of being called to service or to ministry. But I want to look, first of all, at, at just this notion of call in the first reading that Lisa proclaimed from 1 Samuel. And, and part of what we see there is call or vocation is something we experience in relationship, right? When we think about what we're called to or how we are called in life, oftentimes it is, it is God's call or summons mediated in or through another or through the gift or the experience of relationship. Sometimes when a priest is, is invited to serve in a particular parish, we talk about that as a call. 
And I remember when I was, when I was uh, beginning to pray and think about coming here to St. Thomas. Part of the way that I experienced confirmation of that sense of call or that, that gut feeling that I had was because I had a relationship with Deacon Marge. I know Deacon Marge. And so I asked her if we could get together for coffee because I knew she was serving here. And we talked a little bit about St. Thomas and she encouraged me further. And then our senior and junior wardens reached out to me and we met and we had a conversation and, and, and really spent some time talking with one another. And, and through all of that process of, of beginning to make those connections and, and, and have that sense of relationship, that idea of being called here grew stronger and stronger until it became something that I knew that I was being invited to say yes to. But I think call really unfolds and, and happens in, in, in all kinds of other ways as well. At my previous parish, we were located very close to a facility that treats at-risk uh, youth and, and, and adolescents. And part of the way that they do that is by giving the, the young men there at Land Lake an opportunity to work out in the community. And, and one of the leaders of a work crew of young men that would go and maybe assist area businesses or take on different projects was a woman, is a woman named Rose. And inevitably at St. Mary's when we needed help with one of the, maybe a festival we were preparing for or some kind of a community outreach or whatever the case may be, I knew that I could call Rose and I knew that she would bring with her a group of young men from Lead Lake and I knew that whatever it is that we asked them to help us with would be taken care of. And those young men, look to Rose as kind of this, this mother figure in some ways, and a mentor, a coach, a teacher. She was very no-nonsense with them, and yet you knew when you were with her and watched her interact with those young men that she cared for them. She oftentimes would say to me, you know, Father Scott, some of these guys have lived through or seen things that nobody should have to live through or see. And part of what I want to do is teach them through the dignity of work who they are and what they're capable of becoming. And I had no doubt that Rose not only did this job because it was a job, but for her it was also something deeper. There was a sense of, of call or, or vocation or being invited. In the second reading that Lisa proclaimed from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, St. Paul is kind of talking to this fledgling community about sort of different practices or disciplines <coughs> that they are to be about as, as people of faith. And, and he's sort of reminding them, keep in mind who you are and whose you are. He tells them, you are not your own. You do not belong to yourself. You belong to, to, to someone bigger and greater, the creator of the universe. He says, you are the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. And in a sense, part of the idea of call or vocation is we need to figure out who we are, whose we are. In other words, who do we love? And once we can begin to answer that question, who we love, so many other things begin to fall in place. When I was first beginning in, in, in recovery, in, in, in Alcoholics Anonymous, beginning to address the power of that addiction in my life and the path it was taking me on, I went to this, this meeting of students at Marquette. And we were all kind of a mess, right? We're all students in, in, at Marquette. We're all in our 20s. We're all trying to figure out what's happening in our lives and, and, and all desperately trying to, to make sense of this problem we had. And, and so we would go there and thank God there were a couple of men who came from outside the community with longer term sobriety who would sit there and patiently explain to us how to work the steps and what was possible for us in this new way of living, in this way of addressing our addiction. I know left to our own, we would not have come to see that light the way that we did because of these people from the outside community who came in, who knew who they were and whose they were and the gift they had been given at, new, at a new life. And they wanted to share that gift with us. And so we were the recipients of them responding to that call, to that invitation, to that summons. Finally, today in our gospel reading proclaimed by Deacon Marge, 
We have names raised up. Philip, Nathaniel. We, we understand that God invites, summons, calls individuals. God loves us uniquely, each and every one of us. And so whatever it is that makes our heart sing, that gives us passion, that drives us, that gives us hope, that gives us determination, the stuff of our dreams and of our daily lives, all of that is fodder for God to use in inviting us to greater and new and bigger life. And we might think about some of the, the ways we have been called, summoned, invited in our own lives to say yes. When we had first adopted our daughter Mia, she was five years old, and, and she had been with Jenna and I for oh, six, nine months. I'm sure she remembers, well, maybe she remembers this, I don't know. But anyways, one morning we were all kind of sitting together on the couch talking about how we thought God had kind of made us a family. And, uh, and little Mia very kind of wisely looked at Jenna and I and said, you know, I think we were always a family. I think we just had to find each other. And, and there's a sense in that moment of experiencing the fact that, yeah, there was a call here. There was an invitation. There was a summons. My stepmom's cousin one time, we were leaving a wedding, and, and she came from a large rural area, and her cousin Bob is a farmer. And farmers, as you may know, are not people who are necessarily having a great time economically. It's a struggle. It's a hard, hard life. And they were kind of joking as they were leaving the reception and somebody said, Bob, what would you do if you won the lottery? Because the lottery jackpot at that time was tens of millions of dollars. And without a moment's hesitation, Bob looked at the person who asked him and said, you know, I'd keep right on farming till every cent was gone. But he was doing what he loved to do and felt called to do in his life. Now, some of us are fortunate enough to have a sense of vocation or call in our occupation, but not all of us. Some of us are fortunate enough to feel called to, to walk through life with the person that we, we have committed to, with, with our partner, with our spouse. Some of us have had that opportunity to have a sense of call in terms of, of maybe parenting, or some of us have a sense of call to reach out and remember those who may be hurting or struggling on the fringes. Some of us are called to pray for others, but we all are invited by God with the gifts that we've been given to respond to an invitation. Follow me. Continue to live the faith that you have been given and figure out who you are and whose you are. So I want to just kind of leave us with that question, with that thing to think about in terms of what are we called to or invited to in our lives at this time? How is it that God might be nudging us, encouraging us, inviting us? Let's pray for open eyes, open minds, open hearts, that the next time we are invited, we may say yes. Amen. Amen. We continue our prayer now in professing our faith in God in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. <clears throat> Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. 
We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This morning we are using Prayers of the People, Form 6. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, friends and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For, for all who work, work for justice, freedom, freedom and, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the, for the victims, victims of hunger, fear, injustice, injustice and, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For, For all, all who proclaim, proclaim the gospel and, and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, our diocesan leadership, Scott, our priest, Marge, our deacon, and for all bishops and other ministers. For, for all who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, for those in our community celebrating birthdays or anniversaries, those unable to be with us due to illness, those traveling, and those in college, technical school, or serving in the military. We also remember those on our parish prayer list. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, especially the deceased members of this parish, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. This morning in our book of intercessions, we pray for the repose of the soul of Yvonne, the aunt of Noel, Chris, and Melanie. May she rest in peace and rise in glory for her family and friends. For Addison, who will be three years old next month. She has a brain tumor and has been on medication to shrink it. She has already lost one eye due to the tumor and a recent MRI showed the tumor is growing. Her doctors have met to form a new treatment plan. The family asks for prayers that the new treatment will be effective. For all battling cancer, especially Jennifer, Amy, Rick, Terry, and Carol. For all those who are stricken with COVID-19 and all who care for them. For Cindy's mom having surgery for broken leg and arm today, and for Cindy's dad who will have heart surgery Wednesday. And for our nation. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy, mercy upon, upon us. us. Most, Most merciful, merciful Father, in your compassion, compassion forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you've caused a new light to shine in our hearts. To give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels, archangels, all the company of heaven, who forever proclaim this hymn to the glory of your name. subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms on the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. So we recall that on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he'd given you thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling the death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, that they may be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us together with Mary, the mother of Jesus, St. Joseph, her spouse, blessed Thomas of Canterbury, and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And now as 
our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. A reminder that every Sunday you are invited to receive Holy Communion here at St. Thomas in the parking lot. Uh, we, do, we offer Holy Communion between 1045 and 1130 a.m., if that time does not work for you, please contact the parish office and we can make arrangements to share Holy Communion with you in a way that is respectful of social distancing and the other parameters set forth by the pandemic. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and God's Son, Jesus Christ. May God bless us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God.